put your comment, I'll answer your question for you. Second row right over here, Ben. Urban, I'm wondering what the vibe is like around the building or around practice for a game like this with a top 10 matchup and a team who you don't play every year, but every time you play them, there seems to be something on the line. Well, it's pretty workmanlike. You know, this is it's a Wednesday. I think if you know, ask me on a Friday, then the, the, the starts getting a little jumpy and all that. And the guys get excited. But I'm sure they're excited. Uh, this is all about Tuesday, Wednesday is all about practice, execution, getting ready to play. So it's, it's good. It's, it's a work day, though. Third row, right, Tony. Um, Herman, have you um, sorry. the uh, night game atmosphere at Wisconsin? Have you talked to anybody about that? Have you? Oh, we were there. A couple of years ago, I want to say 2012. Like What's that? That was a 3:30 kick. I mean, do you think it's going to be? Was it 3:30? Yeah. Uh, that was pretty nuts. The 3:30 kick. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be loud and have, really loud. Have you talked to anybody about it? Or no, we're good. Uh, front row, middle, Dave. I know you guys probably want to mix things up as far as tempo offensively. Do you feel like your offense is at its best when you guys go up tempo? Uh, I think uh, probably historically that's been the case, and uh, we've had a good conversation about that. So, uh, uh, one thing you better get first down is when you have tempo. So, um, I'd say you know we won, we've had good conversations about tempo. That certainly is a part of our game. And just real quick, any injury updates? Dante Booker, um, anybody else? Uh, Dante Booker spent most of my time with the offense today. I mean. <coughs> Still, like, pretty questionable. Uh, second row left, Ari. Urban, I, I know that you have come to trust Luke Fickle's um, decision making, at least from being able to analyze high school prospects. So I'm asking about Robert Landers. I mean, there's it, the stories go on between Darren Lee and all the guys that he's been able to like sell you on. I was just wondering, with Robert, does it ever take a little bit more on somebody who might be his size in the position he plays? Because He's listed as 6'1", and I think he might be 5'9". <laughs> <laughs> you said that about I. Uh, no, you, I think you, you started off the early, in, early in the, uh, you know, because I didn't know Luke. Uh, you obviously have a good <coughs> reputation, but I trust him when he comes to me, especially with Central Ohio players, and because uh, he knows so many people. And uh, when he goes, gets his eyes on him, and he calls me up and says, "We need to take him out," especially a defensive uh, prospect. The answer is usually sure if we have room. And so, yeah, I have great confidence in Luke. Land is a perfect example. How is he able? I know that the leverage, <coughs> the leverage discussion and how he can get lower and stuff, are you ever surprised? Every single time he's on the field this year, it feels like that kid's making plays. And for his size and the position he plays, I kind of. Oh, he's a quick twi twitch, go hard guy. You know, like you said, yeah, it's hard to get up underneath a little squatty body defensive lineman. And he's, and he's athletic. Second row left, Phil. Urban, I wanted to ask you about. Um, the, the push sweep play you guys run that seemed to be a major part of the offense maybe two years ago, and I think you've only run it once or twice this year where you actually throw it maybe one other time where you hand it off. Um, is that just sort of maybe natural evolution of your offense that that's not as much as a key, or do you have different plays you like more now to get the ball on the edge? Yeah, defenses have kind of worked hard to stop that play or you know, put a dent in it. So uh, that's something we, we actually had a conversation about today as well. But um, uh, defenses worked real hard. I think you see across the country it's kind of it was kind of the rage for a while, and it's kind of slowed down a little bit. And then with Dante, um, you know, he's been questionable or probable for like the last five weeks. Is that injury worse than you anticipated it was going to be? Yeah, but you know, it was worse than I thought when I was first told. Uh, but it's a, a sprained PCL as well as an MCL injury, so it's a tough injury. But he's close. The good thing is he's coming back. You know, and, and we don't put the arms way until they're ready to go. Front row right here, Bill. Two years ago, <coughs> we played these guys in the Big Ten championship game. It was obviously propelled you into uh, what happened and, and it had an effect on them too. Um, is how, just how big was that game, not just for that season, but just your program in general, even since then? Seems like 10 years ago. <laughs> what game? Yeah. It was great. We, we actually watched it the other day and it's, it's very similar defense. And, uh, I mean, I think just for our players and, and this incredible history of the program, that it's forever on the wall somewhere around here. But there really is nothing in this one. But it was a, <coughs> obviously it was a historic moment. I mean, let's say you won that game 24 10 or something. You don't get in the playoff. You have a good year, obviously. Is the program in a different place than it was? Oh, Bill, I don't know. Just trying to be responsible. <laughs> <laughs> philosophical questions on Wednesday of Wisconsin. 
Front row right, Tim. No philosophy. Uh, <laughs> Corey Smith, what's his status? Corey Smith has a uh, wrist injury, and uh, he won't play this week. He didn't play last week, so yeah. we're just trying to get him back. From what you've seen practice for two days now, what, what I guess, makes you feel positive or better about the passing <coughs> game? What have you seen over the last two days? That uh, good players work hard, and uh, the quarterback working really hard at it, receivers, so just practice. Yeah. When something's not working at the level you want it to work at, when you have good players, guys working. Front row right, Austin. Urban, you called uh, that first visit to Camp Randall. You said it was nuts. Uh, it doesn't matter what time of day it was. But you've been to so many famous stadiums around the country and coached them. Uh, do you have a feel for kind of how that one measures up to some others you've been? Oh, yeah, I think it's one of the great environments. Uh, I always heard about it, and uh, obviously to witness it and, and see it, I think, uh, especially the student. Stadium, I just remember to my right, where the view looked like real loud. And then to the left was open, if I remember right. And I remember the overtime that they did a good job. They said, let's go play down there. And uh, we did, we found a way to win the game. But uh, I think it's one great environment. Certainly top five, top six environment in the country. And this is way off topic, but um, you know, I asked you about a month ago about Tim Tebow trying to make that transition to baseball. He said, don't count him out. Now he's in the Arizona Fall League. I'm just wondering if you are able to keep tabs on him at all. And I know you have so much to do in football, but it seems like it's something that might you might be keeping tabs on somehow. Well, sure. I love Tim, and so I, as much as I can, and uh, just pull him for him. I'm just real busy. Uh, second row middle, Ryan. You'll have that uh, that sign on the locker room entrance of the indoor field that says the most prepared team will win this game, and it's I saw it. It was out for the Oklahoma week, and and now this week. I was just wondering. You know, when you started doing that and, you know, what determines when you put it out there and what you want to see out of yeah, your players talking, when they you know, see that? Anytime. It's ESPN game day. It's a night game. It's uh, we're asking questions about the crowd and, and uh, stuff. And uh, just to, that's as much for the coaches as well as the players. You know, I'm mean, asking questions about Tim Tebow. What about 2014? What about the most prepared teams going to win this game? And that's the laser light focus and to win it. A team, uh, a game against a very good team on the road, we better be laser light focus on the task at hand. And so that's just constant reminders about uh, focus on your job description. And that's for <coughs> players as well as the coaches, as well as the head coach. And final question uh, back here, Clay. 2012, do you remember Shea's Sears midair stop of Monty Ball? Oh, yeah. To, uh, and Christian Bryant. Right. Did you jump around? <laughs> this is the picture is up, uh, up somewhere in that hallway, the player's hallway. It's a digital, like, four-frame shot. Oh, really? That was a great play. Did I jump around? Great. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, jump around. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Okay, Coach.